All right. So it starts with a triangle, right? Just like before. Draw the top of the roof, a slanting line, or the side of the roof. And then continue this line all the way across. For the house itself, we're going to add a rectangle. For the dwelling space, there we go. Nice. Pull down the side of the house from the edge of the triangle there. And we just have to add some windows, a door. The door is like a window, but it goes to the floor. Fill in the roof if you like. Nice, nice, nice. Add a chimney. see if anybody can guess what that thing is supposed to be. Yes, Jim? A weather vane is a good guess. That television antenna. A television antenna. Very good. This class today gets an A+. Plus. Television antenna. Back in the day, <laughs> we didn't have cable television and SpongeBob SquarePants or anything cool. <laughs> We had three television channels, and they didn't even run all night. They would go off at about midnight and come on again at 5 a.m. with the farm report. So that you'd know when it was time to go get your chicken eggs. We had only the three channels that came over the airwaves back then. You had to have an antenna, and if you didn't have it pointed the right way, somebody had to go up on the roof and tilt it until the picture was just right. My life was horrible, <laughs> horrible, compared to yours. <coughs> Maybe not, I don't know. Okay, so that's a house. Cool. Excellent. Very pleased. Drawing is a Zen experience. You get to keep yours. I nuke mine so that I have time, a place to do more what? Drawing. Yes, because I enjoy the drawing. And I'm not so much keeping the pictures. That's not as necessary. A man's home is his castle, so we're going to upgrade a castle. It's there at the bottom of the page. You like the castle. You're happy about the castle. You're excited about the castle. That's good. You should be. We're going to castle. Yeah. A fairy tale castle. Yeah. Now, this, this castle here in on the page, it's a black silhouette. <coughs> That's because of the exeroxing process there. It, it actually does have an opening and a portcullis. So we'll go ahead and add the opening and the portcullis because I think it's cooler to have an opening and a portcullis. And I think that's cool just because I like seeing portcullis. That's the, the bars that they put at the entrance of the castle to keep people like me out. <laughs> Then we're going to add three rectangles. Rectangles. That's right. Rectangles have ridges. Now, one thing I, I do like to point out is that I don't really use very straight, very careful lines. I like your lines. Yours are very straight and careful, and that's fine if that comes naturally to you. But I don't worry about that. I use rat lines. I want my lines to be right about there. Rat. Right about there. So as long as it's right about there, that's fine. Okay? What does that mean? Hmm? Right about there. It's not, not exactly right, but right about there. As long as it's right about there, that's fine. No 
don't worry about having every line being perfectly lined up. And that, that will make you crazy. You won't enjoy your drawing. You'll be saying, that line ain't right. Now, we've got kind of a cereal bowl shape up here. sticks. The sticks are for your penance. Your penance. And then he puts little spiky things at the top for the battlements. That's for the archers to hide behind. when they're sallying forth with their arrows. Now you can fill in the castle if you'd like. <coughs> Just make a silhouette. Or you, you can do the brick thing. Now if you decide you want to make it look like it's made out of bricks, you don't have to draw every single brick. You can just indicate them. Like a so. I haven't forgotten a thing. Flags. Oh, yeah. Or you could make it a black silhouette. Doesn't matter either way. When you make the bricks, you don't generally stack the bricks right on top of one another. You stagger them like this, right? You do that for strength. But you can do it this way, too. Yes, now the flags. And here's an interesting thing about this drawing lesson. Mr. Ed Emberley, <coughs> who I respect greatly, has made a mistake in this drawing. I'm going to see if anybody can spot it. Two flags are one way and one flag's the other way. Oh, well, somebody spotted it right away. Excellent. Who was that? Me. Brilliant. I'm going to turn this camera on you. Smile and tell me you're brilliant. I'm brilliant? Ah, yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> what an ego on this child. Okay. Good. All right. We're still aimed where we should be. Oh, Very good. Up. Hey, out. What? This flag <laughs> is going the wrong way. If they're all, if the, the wind is blowing this way, and you got the square flag going that way, and this one's going that way, and this one's going that way, what's this one going the other way for? What is this, some sort of air conditioning vent? <laughs> Pushing everything the wrong way? No. No. We will not have this. This flag is wrong. We will have the flag go this way like all the others. If you have to go the other way, you got to have a reason that it went the other way. Yes, dear. Thank you for showing me your hand. What about that one? That one's fine because it, it is probably blocked by the wind. It certainly can't go exactly the same as the others because it's on the side. The wind pattern would be different for that one, but certainly not for this one on top. Brilliant. That earns this class a Z minus. That's very bad. That's better than an A+. Plus. Yeah, it's like the odometer on a car. When you get to the end of the alphabet, you know, you're, you're as high as you can go, A+. Plus, so you've got to go one higher than that. It clocks all the way around to a Z-. minus. Let's see if you can maintain your Z- minus for the rest of the day. Lovely. Well, if we wanted to go on a sightseeing tour and, and visit that castle, we might want to take a... That's right, train. Very good, children. I'm glad we're Oh. We're going to draw the train down here. Are you all right? Yeah. Good. Nurse, Senator. There we go. Good. good. Okay. Are you sure you're up to this? We can get something else up here. Okay. Okay. No, you're very good. Excellent.
going to give you a Z plus on your test. And you a Z umlaut A. What? I know what that means. That's right. All right. I'm going to draw my train down here in a spirit of third world solidarity. There we go. Kumbaya, my children. So that's a nice long rectangle to start our train. And you fill that in. You may notice I don't fill in completely because I'm trying to conserve my dry erase markers. But you can use the side of your pencil and get that all filled in as much as you'd like. We need a cab. The pilot house. You can use another piece of paper or you can draw it on your tongue. Well, it's kind of a painful process drawing it on your tongue. I would recommend it, but if that's what floats your boat, I'm not going to stop you. There we go. And I'll add one of them smoky stacks there. <laughs> and a light. A light on the front. A light. Yes, yes, dear. What? You do not have a double sided lesson, and thus you don't have a train to look at? Does anybody have a train to look at over here? There we go. Can we share the train so that this nice young lady is able to, in fact, see the train? Thank you so much for your help. We've got an upside down triangle here toward the back, and we got a rat triangle up in the front. So let's add some wheels. Nice big circles. Using rat lions, the only person who can sit down and draw a perfect <coughs> circle was Michelangelo, the Renaissance artist. He's not here, so he's not going to be judging my work. That makes me happy. So we'll make rat circles. Lines up. Very nice. And what am I missing? Some smoke. A dude. Maybe I'll put a little hat on him. Excellent. Now this thing up in the front, anybody know what you call that triangular shape in the front of the train? A plow, you, if, it, if it were used in the snow, they often do put a plow up in the front. That's true, and it does look sort of wedge-shaped like that. But uh, you've probably seen them where they're open up like this, right? Okay, so what do you call that? That's the cow catcher. The what? The cow catcher. It catches cows. It catches cows. Yeah, say you got a cow on the tracks, which often happened in the Old West. You got a cow on the tracks, you don't, you don't want the, the cow to make the whole train crash, right? So you get a cow catcher on the front, and it moves them right off. Well, it depends on how fast the train was going and how smart the cow was. If it was a nimble cow, it would just sort of whoop, jump off the track. You can never understand being hit by a train. The train is about four feet wide. Okay? So if you're not standing in that four feet, you won't get hit by the train. That, that, that happens.